Hi, good day. My name is Ricardo Weinhardt, and in this video, I want to talk about black economic empowerment and non profit organizations. Before I go into the detail, I must tell you that today I'm doing this recording from the Steve Biko Center in King Williamstown. I don't think there could be a better place to do this recording and to talk about black economic empowerment than at the Steve Biko Center in King Williamstown. And it's a sobering experience to visit the museum and to you know, reflect on black economic empowerment in light of the sacrifices that were made in our history. So let's get into the detail of this. So the codes are promulgated in terms of the Black Economic Empowerment Act and one of the purposes of the Act is to enable the meaningful participation of black people in the economy. Now this is the way that Steve Biko has put it. The wealth of the country must eventually be enjoyed by the people of the country. So under the Act, there are different codes that have been published over time. We're going to look at uh, one particular set of codes and that's dealing with specialized enterprises. Now this is dealing with uh, enterprises like state-owned enterprises and non-profit companies or non-profit entities as, as it's referred to under the codes and also public benefit organizations. Now I want to focus on two particular issues under the codes. The first is what's referred to as the exempt micro enterprises. Now, these enterprises have got an annual turnover of less than 10 million and they've got a deemed score and that is status level 4, meaning uh, if you're an exempt micro enterprise you would be recognized as uh, or deemed as status level 4. Now, it's possible under the adjusted um, or the specialized scorecard to increase that score and there's potentially two ways of doing it. The one is if your beneficiaries are at least 75% black people then uh, you can be allocated a score of status level 1. If at least 51% of your beneficiaries are black people as defined in the codes then your score would be, uh, your status level would be level 2. So it is possible, how do you do that? Um, to change from a DIEM status to a either level 1 or level 2, you need to first confirm in an affidavit that your annual turnover as the organization is less than 10 million. Secondly, you need to confirm in that affidavit the composition of your beneficiaries, whether it's at least 75% black people or um, if it's status level 2, at least 51% uh, black people. If that's confirmed, then your organization would be uh, move on from the deemed status uh, as referred to under the specialized uh, codes. Now the codes also refer to qualifying small enterprises. These are entities with um, an annual turnover of more than 10 million but less than 5 million. In that particular context you would be regarded as a qualifying small enterprise. Now, that kind of enterprise is measured according to the specialized qualifying um, enterprise scorecard. And that scorecard has got four elements. Uh, now, the generic scorecard has got five elements, but for the qualifying small enterprise, um, the specialized entities, they've got uh, only four elements. And the one element that's missing is ownership. So, they are measured according to the other four um, elements and that would refer to the management control, skills development, um, enterprise and uh, supply development and also socio-economic development. Different points are allocated to, or scores are allocated for those four elements um, but if, you, if your annual turnover as an organization, a non-profit organization or PBO, if it's between, um, if it's above 10 million and below 5, 50 million then uh, you would qualify as a, you would be a qualifying small enterprise. So as a qualifying small enterprise, if your beneficiaries are at least 75% black people as defined in the codes, then you would have a status level 1. If it's uh, at least 51% uh, black people as defined in the codes, then you would have status level 2. So the last aspect I just want to briefly mention is that recently I went to the tax in Daba 
and the issue of PBOs and BEE came up. And uh, it was quite clear that it's, it's a controversial issue in terms of the BEE codes because the codes allow for um, the concept of broad-based ownership schemes and employment ownership schemes. And the question is, uh, can um, PBOs be those kind of schemes? Now, I'd normally have a disclaimer and saying that this is not legal advice. But let me give you legal advice in this context. And the legal is, advice is that you must speak to an appropriate legal practitioner when dealing with that. It's a controversial issue and uh, it's got legal implications if you are an approved PBO and also want to be a broad-based ownership scheme. Uh, now the codes allow that, but it has to be taken into account in terms of the Income Tax Act as well. So my advice to you is to get legal advice on that issue. Uh, and again, just to confirm that, you know, in terms of BEE, in the context of, um, you know, the his history of South Africa, it's important for organizations to set examples and don't become, um, you know, schemes in terms of uh, BEE and to be authentic and to have integrity in applying the BEE principles. I hope this video has been helpful and thank you for those people that have been sharing the videos and liking it. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you.